Good morning. So today we're going to start the project, um, the new weaving project. And um, for the first step, as much as I love just getting into a weaving project and sitting at the loom and getting the, you know, getting things done, it's important to be able to do some prep work so that while you're warping the loom, you're not spending time frustrated with your yarn for not behaving the way you expect it to. Um, so, first thing we're gonna do um, is we are going to center wind the yarn. We're gonna clean up my yarn mess. And um, while we're doing that, the nice thing about doing this is also is you get to feel the yarn. Your, the yarn's going through your hands and, and creativity grows from that, I find anyway. A little disclaimer, this is an active household. Um, everybody's very respectful of, of any um, recording that I'm doing. However, we are an active household and, you know, it's not a studio. My kitchen is, you know, it's an active kitchen um, and this is where I work. So, between the kitchen and the living room and it's open concept. So, I'm going to change the angle. Uh, we're going to get the, um, the yarn winder in place and we're going to start cleaning up some mess. So, let's go. Okay, I think I have a half decent angle there of what's going to happen. And the first thing we're going to do is, this is a yarn ball winder. And I need to attach it to my countertop so that I can, it won't move while I'm trying to work here. This is just a clamp. There we go, almost there. Here we go. Perhaps I shouldn't hear the plastic crack while I'm doing that. All right. So we're going to start with this mess. And remember, like I said yesterday, this is a result of two things. Um, one, this whole thing going in and out of a bag as I was carrying it around while it was a crochet project. And then not feeling it when it comes to the crochet project and pulling it apart. So here we are. Now, for anybody who's wondering why I don't just pull from the center of the yarn ball, I do. But the yarn company stuffs so much in the middle that things do end up getting tangled up in there and the first amount you pull out you've got this great big mess that you have to then clean up. So if I'm going to do that I might as well clean it all up. So I just happen to have a little space here that I can put this down so we can save some space. And then we get into finding the end. There we go. Okay, for those who have not used a yarn ball winder before, this is a pretty simple um, device. I recommend them. It, this has saved me so much frustration in the past. I cannot, I cannot even explain. So there's a notch. 
There's a couple of them along the, the wheel. You put your yarn in the notch, leave yourself a little tail. I like to wind it twice and then through the, um, looks like a coil, and then you wind. Now this yarn ball winder has um, wound hundreds, I shouldn't say that, not hundreds, hundreds of hours <laughs> of yarn has gone through this. consistent with the pressure. So I've, by holding it up, some people I'm sure are just going to let it go. I like to keep the tension pretty tight on these. I get more yarn on it that way. Okay, just so that everybody can see, I now have all of that mess is now neat and organized. So I'm actually going to continue with this and this is ex okay here's a prime example of exactly why I do this. Look, I'm pulling from the center and look at this mess that's coming out. So when you're working or when you're trying to work the loom and all of a sudden that happens you have to stop everything you're doing. When I'm warping, I want everything to flow smoothly because I'm walking back and forth and I want to make sure it's going to function for me properly. So there you go. I'm glad it actually did that because now I can actually show you. I'm going to continue this and I will come back when I have probably going to wind the whole thing. It won't fit on one ball, but there's no reason why I can't uh, snip it and start a new one. I'm going to wind that big old ball and I'll be back. I wanted to show how I end off a ball when I'm winding. Scissors and a crochet hook. Okay, so I'm gonna snip off the end because it's gotten to the point where the, the wire unit that is, is not gonna be able to swing back and forth. So now that I've snipped it, now I have this tail if you take it off the ball or off the winder, all your work is now for naught. So what I do is I take my crochet hook, I hook it underneath a couple of the rows, and I just pull it through, oops, see, imperfect, that's okay. I pull it through, not all the way, leave a tail, so that will secure it so that when you take it off, by taking the tail off the slot you put it in the first place, sliding it off, now you have a center wound. This is where you're going to pull from ball of yarn. So that when we're warping the loom, this is going to pull out smoothly and I'm not going to have a whole bunch of knots and everything that I have to deal with while I'm warping the loom. It saves me a lot of frustration when I'm warping. I'm going to continue. In the slot, one, two, eh, three, why not? In here. Now that I've gotten the big ball going, it is down further and it is uh, flowing smoothly for me. But you shouldn't have to go all that way to get to a point where it's flowing smoothly from the initial ball. That's why I center wind. So I wasn't sure, I was having second thoughts about using the fuzzy yarn. Go back up there, there we go. And the more tightly woven basic cotton yarn. Um, it's an acrylic and it's not a cotton. Um, so I decided to take one of my um, shuttles, 
It's a shuttle. And wrap the two together around the stick. And this is a great way to get a feel or a vision of what this is going to look like in general. And that just solidified it for me. We're going with this. I'm gonna now get these all center wound. As you can see, the, the black is done. I'm gonna try and zoom out now. There we go. There we go. Um, the black is done. I'll put the white away and uh, I'm gonna get that center wound and we will then be able to start warping the loom. There we go. The yarn is all center wound. I won't be using all of this, um, but it's nice to have that now taken care of so that when I put it away in my stash, it'll be nice and neat and I won't have that um, yarn mess that I did start with with the black. So next step is to unpack the loom and let's get that done. Okay, a lot of people have asked me the question of what kind of loom do I have? This is a Kromsky Park Forte. Um, it is a portable loom. Um, and you probably know this already, but it's a rigid heddle. I have two heddles that go with mine. Um, this one is the supplementary one I purchased, and it is... Um, eight dent and I've gone over in the videos what that means and I've also made there we go, warp separators now some people like to use paper some people like to use um, I've seen old um, blinds be used really creative ways of making sure that your warp doesn't uh, get all messed up. I use these. I just went to the local hardware store and it's um, an inexpensive trim. Cut it to 32 inches because that's the width of my loom. And then um, sanded them down really good. So, take the hook out. Here's the heddle that my loom came with. It, as you can see, is it's much closer together, and it's a, a 12, 10, 12. Hi. Hey, buddy. <laughs> there we go. All right. Slight interruption from my grandson who popped in the room, um, which is just fine, but I'm very aware of YouTube policies. So. I am just going to finish unpacking and separating out the pieces. And there we go. Now, you might as well give a little bit of information on what comes with your Kromsky, at least what came with my Kromsky. Um, I've purchased mine before. Uh, Cromsey came out with the Harp Forte, um, so the I changed out the ratchet and pulse system in mine, and I'll show you that. I think I've shown that in another video. But my Cromsky came with two 32-inch um, shuttles. There we go. And then I made a ton of these warp separators. I like to do really large projects. And so I like to make sure I've got enough to handle pretty much whatever I throw at this. Picked up a small shuttle at some point. And then this is a pickup stick. Um, and it's so that you can do other patterns and um, make for some very interesting um, interesting patterns in your in your fabric. I've done a little bit of this. Um, made a lovely wrap for my best friend that's got some uh, nice floats, but um, that's something that I'm going to explore, so we'll get into that. Not today, but we'll get into that. Alright, so, what is the major part of this is, of course, the heart itself. 
over. So there's your basic harp. I don't know if this can all be seen. Let me come around and take a look. Yep, it can. Um, I do have a stand for it. So I like to immediately get it into its stand so that it's easier to work with. The way you set it into the stand is to make sure that this is... love my heart. It is an absolutely beautiful piece of machinery. The one thing I don't love is the sand. It is not strong enough for the job. We've reinforced mine in a number of ways, but it's still... Um, it's a project that I'm going to need to do at some point, and I just realized you probably just saw my shoulder for all of that, and I apologize. But there we are. There's the, the harp. Let me just get a full picture of that now that it's in its stand. There we go. You probably just saw my shoulder the whole way through. So let's take a quick moment and talk about the modifications I have made to my harp. When I purchased it, again, we talked about the Ratchet and Paul system. It was plastic. Um, they upgraded it, and so I was able to purchase the metal Ratchet and Paul system. So much better. Kromsky, spot on with that. The aprons, I think they're aprons. Um, this, is, this is the bar that you attach your yarn to, and in front and back. And when I purchased this, they were the same wood as the rest of the loom. Beautiful, smooth, amazing finish, but they would bend. So you'd put your yarn on and you would tighten it up and you would get this bowing effect. So back to the um, hardware store we went and uh, this is just aluminum. It rings, it's a little bit loud until you get it strong but it does the job. So those are the modifications I've made to the Harp Forte to make it even stronger. And then there we are. And now very quickly, I have my loom set up and ready to go. Now I am dealing with not a lot of space. The couch back there is the dog's couch and all of that. So what I'm going to be doing is just moving some furniture around for a moment so that we can get this warped. I'm going to be warping from a single peg. So I'll show you how that's set up and then we'll get going. All right, let's do this.